to discuss uh, such an important topic for diagnosis of deep endometriosis by ultrasound. So uh, starting from here, um, just a second. Okay. So we will uh, discuss a quick, a quick uh, introduction about endometriosis. It's a common estrogen-dependent inflammatory disease affecting about 200 million women and adolescent girls worldwide, affecting up to 50% of women with chronic pelvic discomfort and 50% of women with infertility. Although uh, several theories have been postulated, the pathophysiology is still quite debatable and clear evidence is lacking. Due to the asymptomatic nature of the disease, its natural history uh, has never been adequately characterized. Endometriosis symptoms can be nonspecific and overlap significantly with other clinical conditions. That's why the diagnosis can be uh, delayed and also treatment. So the targeted ultrasound scanning for deep endometriosis, uh, what's called by the IDEA group, International Deep Endometriosis Analysis, uh, has um, uh, uh, published a consensus on how to systematically uh, scan patients with suspected deep endometriosis. So it's composed of several items, starting with assessment of uh, the uterus and adenexa, uh, the sliding tests, and, uh, assessment of the anterior compartment, including uh, the bladder, pelvic ureters, and the kidneys, and assessment of the posterior compartment, including the lower rectum, posterior vaginal wall, rectal vaginal septum, the upper rectum, torus uterinus, uterosacral ligaments, recto, uh, rectosigmoid, and sigmoid collar. So let us uh, take a quick idea about the important sites that can be affected with deep endometriotic lesions, starting with the uh, dome of the bladder, uh, the trigone of the bladder, which is the base of the bladder, torus uterinus, which is the intersection of the uterosacral ligaments at the back of the uterus, uh, posterior vaginal uh, wall, direct vaginal uh, space or septum, a lower rectum, which is the part of the rectum facing the posterior vagina and the rectal vagina septum, below the peritoneal reflection of the part of Douglas, the upper rectum, uh, rectus sigmoid junction facing the fundus of the uterus, and the sigmoid uh, colon. So first, before starting the, uh, the uh, uh, ultrasound examination, you have to keep in mind that this patient's actually in pain, and uh, the pain threshold for uh, such patients Sometimes there can be a low pain threshold, so you have to be as gentle as possible uh, not to uh, 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 cause any discomfort for the patient so you can examine her uh, thoroughly and meticulously. So we will start with the uterus and taking the dimensions of the uterus in three dimensions, the uterus cervical, uh, cervical uh, length, the anteroposterior diameter, and the transverse diameter. Uh, this is important to uh, diagnose if the patient is having any uh, signs of adenomyosis or any uh, globular enlargement of uh, the uterus, as, as we are going to discuss in the coming slides. Also, the presence of antiverted retroflexed uterus, this is a very important sign that may uh, uh, increase the suspicion that there are adhesions uh, at the back of the uterus and at the pouch of Douglas, retracting the body of the uterus backwards. So uh, the, this uh, uh, article was published in the ESWOG uh, as a sonographic classification and reporting system for diagnosis of adenomyosis in what's called by morphological uterus uh, sonographic assessment, MUSA criteria for diagnosis of adenomyosis, which consists of um, a, a globular enlargement of the uterus, asymmetrical thickening of the anterior posterior wall, presence of myometrial cysts, hyperechoic islands, fan, shaped shadowing, echogenic subendometrial lines and buds, translesional vascularity, irregular junctional zone, and interrupted junctional zone by 2D and 3D ultrasound. So in this uh, patient, you can uh, actually uh, uh, spot three of these criteria. Uh, as we can see here, that there's a globular enlargement of the uterus. As we can see in the dimensions, the, the thickness of the uterus is about 10 centimeters. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, uterus cervical length is 10 centimeters and the thickness is 6.8 centimeters, which is considered to be quite larger than the normal dimensions of the uterus. Asymmetrical thickening of the anterior and the posterior wall, as we can see, and also we can see here hyperechoic islands. So these are signs of adenomyotic uterus. 
There's a difference between focal and diffuse adenomyosis. The focal adenomyosis, by definition, means that the uh, the lesion about more than 50, about 25% uh, of its circumference is surrounded by normal myometrium. So as we can see here in the, this diagram, the, uh, the circumference of the lesion is mostly uh, ent uh, uh, entirely uh, uh, surrounded by normal myometrium. So this is, by definition, focal uh, uh, adenomyosis. As we can see here in this uh, uh, son uh, uh, sonographic picture, this is a picture of focal adenomyosis. And as we can see, that uh, most of the circumference of the lesion is surrounded by normal myometrium. And there's a very important sign, which is the question mark uh, uterus or the question mark endometrial cavity, which is a sign of uterine adenomyosis. Then after uh, uh, scanning the uterus, checking for any uh, pathologies or any lesions like adenomyosis and fibroids, we will shift to the ovaries, and also we will take the dimensions of the ovaries in three uh, dimensions. And if there's any particular lesion in the ovary, like endometriomas or any uh, any other uh, types of ovarian cysts, will be measured uh, individually and will be written in the ultrasound report as an individual uh, independent item. As we can see here, this is very important to assess any uh, ovarian pathology. After the, uh, assessing the ovary, it's very important to check for uh, hydrosalpins or hematosalpins, which is uh, uh, can be a sign of uh, pelvic adhesions and uh, pelvic chronic inflammation. And this is a very important sign to scan uh, the, uh, the other items of the pelvis, searching for any uh, lesions of deep endometriosis. <laughs> Then uh, we will uh, uh, test the sliding and the relation of different organs of the pelvis to each other, uh, checking for any uh, adhesions between them. So we will check the uterovesical pouch first and the pouch of Douglas. The pouch of Douglas is divided into upper part and lower part, as we can see, as we will see. And uh, we will check the relation between the uterus and the adenexia on both sides. So firstly, we will check the uh, the uterovesical pouch. As we can see, by pressing the probe in the anterior fornix against the uterus, the bladder can slide freely, and this means that there's no any adhesions or any sign of uh, deep endometriotic uh, lesions between the uterus and the bladder. Then we will shift to the uterus and adenexa. We can see here that this is the uh, one of the adenexa having uh, multiple endometriomas, and this is the uterus in a transverse view. And we will compress in between the uterus and the adenexa and to check if there's any sliding uh, uh, and the organs are uh, moving in the opposite direction. Actually, we can see that both of them are moving as a single item. So that means that the ovary is added into the back of the uterus. Then we will shift to the uh, uh, pouch of Douglas by pushing the probe against the anterior fornix in cases of AVF uterus. This is very important. In AVF uterus, we will place the probe into the uh, uh, anterior fornix and we will press gently uh, against the uterus. As we can see here that the right clip showing a free move, uh, movement of the uterus against the bowel, while in the left uh, clip, we can see that there's multiple structures added into the back of the cervix and the back of the uterus. So once we if, uh, find a negative sliding test, this uh, can increase or raise the possibility uh, that the patient may be complaining or suffering from deep endometriosis. Then in cases of RVF uterus, this is a very important uh, tip and trick that you have to uh, place uh, the, the probe into the posterior fornix and you will uh, uh, press against the fundus as usual. And you can see here that the bowel and intra-abdominal uh, uh, organs are sliding freely above the uterine fundus and this will exclude the presence of any adhesions. Then the upper uh, part of Douglas, which is the back of the uterine body, the body of the uterus, as we can see here, there's a, a negative, uh, there's a smooth sliding of the bowel uh, against the back of the uterus. This is very important also. Then uh, we will uh, shift to the anterior compartment, which includes the bladder and the ureters. 
and we include actually the kidneys with the anterior compartment, although it's a, 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 a separate entity than the uh, anterior compartment. So we can see here that the bladder, we will trace the lining of the bladder, as we can see here on the left picture, that the bladder is smooth and uh, the, the outline is regular. Although on the right side, you can, you can see a, a heterogeneous, uh, irregular mass involving the part of the dome of the bladder and the trigone of the bladder. This patient was actually complaining of uh, hematuria and the pelvic uh, pain, either with uh, with menses or outside her um, um, menstrual uh, bleeding. And we underwent a uh, partial cystectomy, and the patient actually improved the, the, in terms of the pain and the hematuria that she was suffering from. Then we will switch to the ureters. The ureter, you can see a, a tubular hypoechoic structure that is passing into the trigone of the bladder on both sides. So how we can check the ureter technically? Uh, actually, you, you need to uh, recede the probe slightly outwards into the vagina. Then you will sweep gently to the right and left with a slight twisting of the uh, transvaginal probe till you can uh, uh, straighten the ureter. And you will keep following the ureter till, till reaching the great vessel, the lateral uh, uh, on the lateral pelvic wall, and the uterine artery from its origin. And this is actually the lateral parametrium. And this is also an important site to ha you have to check to exclude any presence of deep endometriosis. The ureter is very important to check in these patients because sometimes it can be uh, in a very close proximity to uh, certain uh, uh, adenexal masses, as you can see here. This is a left adenexal mass, uh, most probably left endometrioma, and the ureter is slightly below, uh, is uh, very close to the adenexa, as you can see here also. This is a huge endometrioma and is um, uh, almost a, 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 a in flush with the ureter, and this is very important in your dissection to be noted with this uh, small piece of information to decrease the incidence of ureteric injury. So if you are in doubt that this is the ureter, you can uh, wait for uh, uh, say it, uh, about one or two minutes till you check the uh, ureteric prostalysis, and this will confirm that this is uh, the ureter. And from now on, you can uh, track the ureter till reaching the great vessels. So you can check the pelvic ureter, the entire length of the pelvic ureter to check if there's any uh, deep endometriotic lesions or any hydronephrosis, uh, hydro ureter in any part of the pelvis. You can also uh, open the color Doppler at, uh, at the side of the ureteric orifice uh, while uh, checking the, uh, the urine jet into the bladder. It will give a signal by color Doppler. Then uh, lastly, we will check the kidneys, the right and left kidney, and it's very important also because sometimes if any uh, ureteric actual uh, intrinsic lesion in the ureter, there will be hydro hydroureter and hydronephrosis, even if it is not, uh, the patient is not complaining of uh, any loin pain, it can be uh, detected. Also, if there's any large adenexal mass, it can cause uh, pressure on the ureter and back pressure on the kidneys. Then we will shift to the posterior compartment. This is a very important uh, point, uh, uh, point that you have to do while scanning these patients. You have to unfreeze the probe before entering into the vagina to uh, detect very important structures. As we can see here, this is the vagina, and this is the rectum, and this is the urethra, and this is the uh, bladder. So this is the rectum, and once you, you, you spot the rectum, you will keep on uh, following uh, the rectum till uh, just a second. Okay. Okay. So once you, you spot the rectum, you will keep on uh, following the rectum uh, to check uh, uh, or to exclude any deep endometriosis in the lower rectum. 
as we can uh, as we will see in the coming slides how to uh, uh, identify the boundaries of the lower rectum the upper rectum rectus sigmoid and uh, the sigmoid column so this is the 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 uh, sonographic uh, characteristics or the sonographic anatomy of the rectum uh, while introducing the probe into the vagina Okay, so uh, you, in this picture, we need to uh, uh, to identify very important anatomical structures that can be affected by deep endometriosis, uh, starting from the vaginal lumen, which is the uh, hypoechoic area just adherent to the uh, adjacent to the uh, tip of the transvaginal probe, then the posterior vaginal wall. Uh, uh, this is the 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 the, the very next uh, layer after the vaginal human then this hyperechoic line is the rectal vaginal septum and this uh, the the next hypoechoic area or hypoechoic zone is the anterior rectal musculosa which is the most important uh, layer that you have to uh, visualize and examine during the uh, your, uh, your ultrasound scan to check for any rectal endometriosis so the rectal vaginal septum, by definition, is as a, a potential space between the posterior vaginal wall and the lower rectum below the reflection of the peritoneum uh, of the pouch of Douglas, which is a very important site that you have to exclude uh, the presence of any deep endometriotic lesions. So this is the, the rectum uh, by ultrasound. This is the anterior rectal musculosa, and this is the submucosa and mucosa, then the rectal lumen. Then the submucosa and mucosa of the posterior wall and the posterior rectal uh, musculosa. The most important layer is the anterior rectal musculosa. So when you need to uh, uh, examine the posterior compartment, you have to shift your uh, transvaginal probe from the anterior compartment. You will uh, receive the probe slightly backwards. Then you would push the probe into the posterior compartment so you can see here the rectum is more clear and you will exclude or uh, the uterus will disappear from the uh, screen and you will be focusing only on the uh, posterior vaginal wall the uterosacral ligaments as we can see as we will see in the coming slides and the rectum and rectosigmoid junction in this clip, we will check a patient. We will see a patient with rectal nodule, and we will see how we will track the anterior rectal musculosa, which is the anterior hypoechoic line. So you can uh, identify here that this anterior rectal musculosa, and you will keep on tracking it gently and meticulously, and we will navigate with the probe till we uh, follow the anterior rectal musculosa, and we actually can see a large... Uh, a curved uh, irregular uh, hypoechoic lesion, and this was actually an anterior, uh, uh, an upper uh, rectal, uh, large endometriotic nodule. So it's very important to track the uh, anterior uh, musculosa to exclude uh, the presence of any endometriosis. So in the posterior compartment, we have several important questions that we need to answer. Uh, firstly, uh, is there any rectal stenosis? And if you are suspecting rectal stenosis by scanning of uh, such patient, this is the first point. The distance from the anal verge, because this is very important and this will decide the uh, can uh, change the, the way of uh, management or the surgical plan that you are uh, uh, having. Involvement of adjacent structures like the uh, 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 vaginal wall that like the uterosacral ligaments because they are very adjacent to the rectum uh, and very near to the rectum and sometimes the rectal nodule can invade also uh, adjacent structures like the vaginal wall and the uterosacral ligaments and the uterine torus and to check if there's any multifocal lesions or multicentric lesions multifocal lesions the, uh, it means that several le le lesions in the same uh, uh, compartment of the rectum and multicentric lesions that are several lesions in different areas of the rectum and the rectus sigmoid. So there are markers for rectal stenosis and want to suspect uh, rectal stenosis. Firstly, the angle of the nodule. We can see here that this nodule is curved nodule about 90 degrees while this uh, the other nodule is flat nodule. So this this nodule is uh, actually uh, this nodule. This nodule is this nodule. The the curved nodule is 
uh, considered to be uh, uh, increase the suspicion of uh, uh, rectal uh, stenosis. While the flattening nodule is accompanied with a lower suspicion of uh, uh, rectal stenosis. Then the circumference, we will check in the transverse diameter, the transverse diameter of the rectal nodule compare, compared with the uh, rectal lumen. And if there's more, the, 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 the rectal, rectal nodule is, uh, or the rectal lumen is less than 50% of the diameter of the rectal nodule, so we will suspect that there's rectal stenosis. And the anteroposterior diameter of the rectal nodule, which is, means the depth of the lesion into the rectal uh, wall, and if uh, by uh, according to the literature, if the rectal nodule is more than uh, so, uh, some uh, some articles saying that if more than seven millimeters, and others saying more than one centimeter, if the depth is more than that, this is the cutoff point uh, of suspect uh, of suspicion of uh, deep uh, 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 of uh, I'm sorry rectal uh, lumen stenosis. Then the distance from the anal verge. We have some anatomical points uh, that we uh, depend on to uh, know the, uh, the the level of the lesion. So firstly, the, the red zone, which is behind the posterior vaginal roll, is the lower rectum. And then uh, starting from the uh, 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 internal cervical os or from the site of uterine torus is the upper uh, rectum, then facing the uh, uterine fundus at the rectal sigmoid junction, then beyond this will be the sigmoid collar. So as we can see here, this is the site of the uterine to torus. How we can check uh, or how we can estimate the, the site of the uterine torus if we draw an imaginary line starting from the uh, bladder peritoneal reflection passing through the internal os, it will end up at the uterine torus. So the uterine torus, I think, is, most, is the most reliable anatomical landmark to check the site of the rectal nodule or to check the distance from the anal uh, verge. And if it is uh, more, uh, it is above the uh, uterine torus, so it is at least 10 centimeters from the anal verge, while if it is lower than the uterine torus, so it can, can be from uh, 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 less than 8 centimeters from the inner verge, and it's considered to be a lower rectal nodule, and this is uh, considered to, to have a, a, a totally different uh, surgical plan than the upper uh, lesions. We can see here the, 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 the second uh, question, which is the, the involvement of adjacent structures. As we can see here, this is the anterior rectal musculosa for this patient. And this is the uterosacral ligament. This is a large rectal uh, endometriotic nodule. And this is extension of the rectal nodule into the uh, proximal part of the uterosacral ligament. So we will shift after finishing the, the we finished the rectal uh, endom, uh, endometriosis. We will shift to the uterosacral ligaments. We have uh, uh, two techniques to visualize the uterosacral ligaments by ultrasound. The first technique is uh, 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 firstly facing or uh, positioning the transvaginal probe into the posterior uh, 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 vaginal fornix and pressing against the posterior vaginal wall. And you will identify two uh, layers, the hypercoke layer, which is the posterior vaginal wall, and the uh, 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 next layer will be a hyperechoic line, which is the peritoneum of the pouch of Douglas. Next, I think this diagram will simplify uh, the, the, the idea of the technique. We will uh, sweep uh, with the transvaginal probe gently to the left, for example, uh, towards the patient uh, right leg to check the uh, right uterosacral ligament and simultaneously while switching the probe to the left we would rotate slightly clockwise more uh, not usually more than 45 degrees so uh, anatomically this is the cervix and the probe will be here in the mid sagittal plane in the posterior vagin fornix and this is the uh, this is the uh, sacrum and this is the position of the uterosacral ligaments on both sides so to uh, adjust this mid sagittal plane of the probe uh, on the uterosacral ligament you have to uh, uh, sweep the probe uh, laterally and you would rotate simultaneously clockwise so the, can, uh, the the resultant position of the probe will be just aligned with the uterosacral ligament so you can see the uterosacral ligament straightened and stretched all over the tip of the transvaginal probe
and to check the left utricular ligament, you will uh, uh, move uh, uh, as a mirror image to the right one. You will uh, sweep to the right and you will rotate the probe in the opposite direction, 45 degrees anti-clockwise. This is the first technique and we will apply it in, in the coming uh, clips. Then the second technique is adjusting the probe against the trine torus and we just discussed how to uh, 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 spot or how to lo localize the the trine torus by drawing uh, drawing an imaginary line from the bladder to the internal os and to the trine torus once you position the probe you will rotate the probe 90 degrees to check the transverse uh, uh, view of the cervix or uh, of the isthmus, and you will uh, 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 see or visualize two hyperechoic lines on both sides of the cervix, and as you can see, and these are the size of the uh, uterosacral ligaments in the transverse view. This is how the uh, uterocyclic ligament uh, looks uh, in a transverse view. Uh, as you can see here, this is the cervix, and this hyperechoic uh, structure is the peritoneal augmentation at the site of uh, the uterocyclic ligament. This is another picture showing the uterocyclic ligaments on both sides while adjusting the probe at the transverse view at the site of the uterine torus. So have a look uh, on this clip showing uh, a uterosacral endometriotic lesion. We will have a look on it, and then we will analyze it in the coming slides. So this is the uterus and endometrioma, and we are just uh, uh, following the uh, steps of the first technique. Then we will shift to the transverse view, and you can see a uh, hypoechoic lesion at the site of the uh, uterosacral uh, ligament. So let's, uh, this uh, picture will help us to uh, analyze the, the, the last video. This is the uterus. This is the posterior vaginal wall. This is the uterosacral ligament. And this is endometrioma. And this is the rectum. And finally, this is the uterosacral nodule. The uterosacral nodule actually uh, uh, in the middle between the adhesions uh, uh, involving the uterus, the endometrioma, the rectum, and the uterosacral ligament. The same patient, when we shift the probe in a transverse view and uh, to check the uterosacral ligaments on both sides, you can see the difference uh, between uh, this uterosacral ligament and the other uterosacral ligament. You can uh, uh, this is the normal uterosacral ligament on the left uh, on the left uh, side, and on the right side you can see here this is the uh, a normal uterosacral ligament, and this is a thickened, inflamed uterosacral ligament because of this red lesion, which is endometriotic uh, uh, involvement of uh, the uterosacral ligament. So finally, uh, uh, you have we have to be gentle and to respect the patient's uh, complaints. Uh, systematic ultrasound scan is mandatory for deep endometriosis diagnosis and planning of surgery. And a very important point that endometriomas are rarely isolated. So we, once you find an endometrioma by ultrasound, it's very important to scan the whole pelvis to exclude the presence of any endometriotic lesions that uh, will uh, be playing a very important part in, uh, in the patient uh, suffering and complaints. Thank you.